for this afternoon is home care management and housekeeping and this is module 5 of our caregiving course now what is home care so we will first define what is home care so home care is a support provided to people in their own homes and we call this as domiciliary help or home help okay so when you are a caregiver and you are taking care of elderly not only elderly but also children and those are clients who need support from their homes and we have to seek the uh, assistance of a home care agency so that we can work at home with our clients and uh, home care allows people to continue their routine and uh, activities of daily living and fulfill their independent lives in a familiar environment with support from a caregiver. Now, according to the research, many elderly prefer to be cared at home rather than receiving care from the residential care facility. Now, who is suitable to home care service? Okay, home care is suitable for individual in all ages, both young and old. So um, there are those younger clients that need day-to-day -day support and reinforce their independence and enhance their quality of life. Now, who provides the care? Okay, who are those uh, person or individual suitable for providing care to clients. Care is provided by all caregivers who completed thorough induction training and continue to complete national certificates in a reputable and recognized training institute. What are the benefits of home care? Why it is, um, why the elderly prefer to be cared at home rather receiving care from the residential care facility. What are the benefits of home care? First, in the home care, they can continue their routine and retain and also establish their independence. So they need assistance from the caregiver, but at the same time, they can establish their independence when they are being cared at home. Home care allows to remain in the familiar surroundings and retain the social contact they enjoy with their family, neighbors, and friends. So receiving care at home also enables you to keep all your belongings and pets which cannot be possible in the residential care facility. How about the control of cost? Who is more costly or who, is, who has the cheaper rates? Is it the home care or the residential care facility? So home care usually works in a cheaper rates than in the residential care facility. And there is no stress in moving and adjusting in a new environment they, because they are already within their comfort zone. Moving out in your own home and in an unsettling environment is a very traumatic experience, especially for elderly, those uh, clients who have experienced uh, clients with dementia, and they can be detrimental to their health, their mental health as well, and well-being. At home, they have regular physical contact with their caregivers. Caregivers are beside their clients 24-7. Whereas in the healthcare facility or residential care facility, they only need uh, caregivers and nurses usually visit them in their room if they need them or if they require need or assistance. 
Clients who have caregivers in their home are likely to experience high levels of hormones, which are responsible for lowering their stress and blood pressure and also increasing their mood. Now let's go first to the providers of care at home. What are the uh, care that is being provided by caregivers? And these are the types of support that they can offer for clients in their home. First is companionship. So there are elderly that they can do simple tasks but they need somebody to be with them at home. Children are so busy with their work, with their businesses, and they have no time to take care of their parents 24 seven. So they are hiring caregivers to take care of their parents at home. Domestic support. They can do simple tasks, but they still need support from a caregiver and support for their independence towards their activities of daily living. And the last is personal care. Now there are special care provided by caregivers at home like skills enhancement. And skills enhancement is teaching younger clients daily living skills and support them to have a full an active role in school life and access further education and employment as well as encouraging clients to engage in any community organizations and participate in any activities with their interests and skills. Another special care that caregiver can offer at home is leisure activities. Clients must continue enjoying life outside their home. But they must ensure that caregivers are capable of assisting their needs and providing safety and security while they are outside their homes. Next is spiritual enhancement. Rendering time for personal upliftment through spiritual messages from the scriptures and offering prayers and meditation. Who are the professionals who will be part of your home care? So you will not be working alone or you will not be alone taking care of clients because there are health professionals who will be working with you in the home care. Because in the home care, we must work as a team. Okay, the first health professional is physician. So what is a physician? Physician is a medical practitioner. This is the one who examines physically the needs of the client. He regularly visits the client at home to ensure that health conditions are maintained in normal parameters. Next to physician is the case manager. The case manager is a nurse who directly evaluates the needs of clients. She provides reports to the physician pertaining to the client's health condition. And next to the case manager is your nurse supervisor. Nurse supervisor is an overseer to the client and caregiver. She provides information and endorses to the case manager whatever is observed and needed. And the last is the caregiver. She or he is the direct care provider to the client. She ensures that the client's needs are being met. She provides necessary information and observes from the client and reports to the immediate supervisor. And the caregiver also is the direct person in contact with the family and significant others. And there's one healthcare entity, we call that physiotherapist. 
This facial therapy is to work to individual client, to family who need the rehabilitative treatment. And they visit the client's home twice or thrice a week, but this depends on the rehabilitative needs of the client. Now, why working as a team is very important. It creates complementary strength within the organization. It builds trust in each other. It fosters creativity and learning strides when people work together and it teaches resolution skills. Now, aside from your daily uh, activities of living, you're providing to your patient like uh, bathing, grooming, feeding, accompanying the patient for a walk. We have to formulate or we have to write a daily care plan. Okay, so that daily care plan should be written each after your shift. Now, what is a daily care plan? A daily care plan is a summary report based on the activity of daily living. This is activity of daily living of the client in their home or it can be in the residential facility. And they ensure that activities of daily living is being maximized and being met. Now, what are the contents of your daily care plan? So first, we have assessment. These are observations, okay? Observations from the caregiver and also uh, observation. Uh, this is also experiences felt by the patient itself. So these are verbalizes or it was or it is verbalized by the patient so in assessment we have the subjective which is the patient is the one talking and objective is when the uh, care, uh, caregiver is the one observing the patient now aside from assessment we have chief complaints Chief complaints from the care uh, from the patient, and here is your here are your activities of daily living like your grooming, bathing, feeding, toileting. We have medications. We have doctor's visit, leisure activities, care actions, and evaluation summary. Now, the step one of your daily care plan is endorsement. So, before you receive the patient, you must first see to it that everything is well done by the previous shift. And the caregiver who is going out will endorse the things and summarize all interventions done with the patient in a given period of time. So what is that given period of time? That is when the client, uh, when the caregiver started their work at six o'clock and they will end at six o'clock. So that is 12 hours. That is a given period of time. So that is when you will start writing or recording all the things happened, provided intervention Okay, also your uh, assessment, including complaints from that given period of time. So the outpatient, uh, the outgoing caregiver will endorse to the incoming caregiver. So now what are the things to endorse? So we must know what are the things to endorse. So when you are endorsing one or more client, you make sure you have to endorse one client one at a time, okay? So let's say endorsing five clients 
in room 101, Muhammad Ali, 24 years old, male, diagnosed to have congestive heart failure under Dr. George. So that is how you, so mention vital signs are taken and recorded, blood pressure of 180 over 100, temperature of 37.8 degrees Celsius, respiration of 18 breathes per minute, blood sugar of 100 mg per dl, and oxygen saturation of 95%. So you must mention all the vital signs that you took from that patient. Next is assessment and complaints. So we have pain, difficulty of breathing, immobility, discomforts, insomnia, anorexia, any allergic reactions, and change in any behavior like psychosocial, psychological instability. Now we have regular treatment. Okay, what are the regular treatment that we provide to our patient? Like wound care, what is exercise, physiotherapy. Okay, if the patient is having a physiotherapist at home and doctor's visit. Whenever the doctor visits the patient, you have to document the time and who is the doctor that visited the patient. What are the recommendations of the doctor? <coughs> Including observation and suggestions from the doctor. <coughs> Next is medi medications. Our medicines, our medicines should be indoors. Okay, what are medications? Those new medications, medications that are discontinued, completed medications, and if there are special endorsement regarding a medication, so we have to endorse this one. Next is elimination. This is the consistency of urine and bowel movement. Now, how about feeding? We must record the amount of food consumed, food preferences by patients when there are special diets and anorexia. Rest and sleep. How many number of hours is uh, your client sleep? Is there any nap hours during morning time or evening time? Or if your patient is having insomnia? <coughs> okay, family concern. <coughs> Regarding treatment also should be included. Step two. <coughs> assessment and vital signs before we go to our activity of that day we must first take the vital signs of a patient this will serve as the basic guide for the carer throughout the day's activity let's say your basic vital signs that you took from patient is elevated. Everything is elevated. Uh, temperature is high. Blood pressure is high. So don't proceed to your activity plan. Okay, so it serves as a guide for the carer in throughout their activity plan. Next is you must know how to understand the normal values of each vital procedure. So that is very important for a caregiver to know the normal values of each vital procedure. Record and document each result of all vital signs. 
observe any abnormalities and alteration from the normal values during and after the procedure and report this to your supervisor. And step three, we have morning care. So morning care includes bathing. In bathing, we have to take note if we provided complete bath, that is including shampooing or only sponge bath, it is a partial bath using a piece of wet cloth or a towel. Grooming, combing of hair, trimming of fingernails and toenails, changing of clothes and diapers, brushing uh, of teeth, then changing linens, perennial care, and shaving the facial hair for male clients. So these are a part of your grooming and morning care. Now in step four, we have feeding. Take note if the patient can eat alone. Just provide the patient and serve the food preference of the patient or if the patient is having special diet. You must take note if uh, the patient will eat with assistance or in a nasogastric tube or in a percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy feeding. Two. Next is elimination, like changing diaper, emptying the urine bag, and stool care. On step six, we have exercise, physiotherapy, and mobility. We must plan for a regular passive exercise. So what is passive exercise? You are helping the patient to move their extremities or their joints. Refer to the physiotherapist for rehabilitation. Let the patient sit on bed, stand with assistance, walk with assistance, and wheelchair ride. On step seven, treatment. We have body massage to prevent from contractures and foot drop. We have steam inhalation, this helps loosen mucous secretions, wound care or facilitate healing, and prevents further infection. And we have suctioning, this is removing tenacious phlegm and mucous secretions. And step eight, leisure activities. Leisure activities like reading a book or newspaper, listening to music, sing a hymn, or strolling with our favorite pet. And on step nine, this is rest and sleep. So providing conducive environment to rest and sleep, eliminate noise, and keep room temperature at 24 to 25 degrees Celsius. It allows also rest periods between activities and encourage has the time for rest. Okay. Now, the next is about housekeeping. What is housekeeping? This refers to the management of duties involving running a household, such as cleaning, cooking, home management, shopping, laundry, and bill payment. So, I have only, only choose uh, two tasks in housekeeping and this is ironing your shirt, your pants and uh, setting the table. Now when you iron your shirt you have to start from the back to the collar. This is to uh, uh, avoid visible creases near the collar points. Now, step two is the cuff. So first, iron inside the cuff to remove the main creases. Then finish off by ironing the outside area using the same method. And iron gently around the bottoms to avoid damaging them. In step four, you must iron the back. When ironing the back, you'll need to be extra careful of your shirt has pleats. 
So proceed with ironing the rest of the back and uh, you'll need to reposition the shirt several times on a flat surface to reach all edges and corners. Next is ironing the shoulders. So place the shirt in one of the ironing board in one of the sleeve and iron it gently. Step six, uh, step six, yes, the front and the pocket. So you don't want to dump for the shirt. Okay, start from uh, the outside, moving to in uh, into prevent creases. And in step seven, it's the front of the collar. So finish up by ironing the front of the collar, applying the same method you use, starting at the edges and working your way towards the middle. The next is how to iron your pants. Iron the pockets and you must turn your pants inside out. Then iron the fly, the seams, the hems, and the waistband also iron the legs and set the steam with process. Now for the table setting, okay, this is the last uh, task in our module. Okay, when you go to the table, you must uh, wash your hands first and with a clean face. Then you have to teach the ch your children to have table manners and right conduct when they are in front of the table. Now, always ask if there is anything you can do. Okay, whether at home, if someone else house, always ask uh, the host if you can do anything to help them. Number three is setting the table. So remember BMW. Okay, B means bread, and milk and water they goes to the right okay uh, remember bread and milk goes to the left but water goes to the right and how about silverware okay the letters in fork has four letters and left has four letters so they goes to the left and how about the spoon and the knife the spoon and the knife has five letters and the right has five letters, so they go both to the right. Then watch the host to see when they should unfold their napkin. That's the time you can unfold yours. Then wait until everyone is being served before eating. Never ever chew your food when you with your mouth open. So you have to Chew with your mouth closed and talk when, don't talk when your mouth is full. And never stuff your mouth. Teach your children to take small bites and never walk down his food. And the last is do not interrupt when someone else is talking. So at the table, Practice having your child wait their turn to speak when talking about their day or another subject. So that ends our module five. Okay, so any question before we end? Yung ano po ba ma'am yung pag-check sa vital signs? Ah, okay. 